Well, for more on this, let's bring in AUT public health expert Grant Schofield. Grant, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, this is a no-brainer, isn't it? Should any school be selling anyone sugary drinks? Well, I guess it sort of depends on what you decide as a sugary drink, and I think it also depends on... I think we have a different view on the age of the kid as well. So, yeah, you don't want your five-year-old going to school and picking up a Coke at lunchtime. is probably not a thing. And, and I don't think that is actually a thing. Uh, but remember, in that category is also orange juices and flavoured milks. And, and, yeah, probably they're getting to the time where I think they're out as well. Uh, and, I, and I think for those younger kids, we don't want them making up their minds because... Actually, that's a major cost to the healthcare system. We're having to pull their teeth out. It's affecting their health in all sorts of ways. It's probably a different situation when you get into your older teenagers. I think we're trying to help them operate in a, an environment that is full of junk food. Should we exacerbate it by having it at school? No, nah, probably not. So I think all in all, yeah, I think my take on it is no, probably shouldn't be selling them. Is no. OK. Uh, Chris Hipkins says they're going to keep their hands out of the lunch boxes. Should they? Or do they need to get serious about this and come down hard on it? Uh, I, I think that this government needs to actually do more than some symbolism here, which is all this is, actually, because it's going to make no di real difference. And uh, it sounds good. We're doing a little bit about nutrition. But the reality is that the nutrition environment that we operate in as a society, uh, and especially our kids, is and, and we've done quite a bit of work on this ourselves, is about 80% ultra-processed food, and that's what we mainly call junk food. And... 20% actual food, food that would rot or run away because you've just caught it type thing. And we'd like to see that completely reversed, that we're not going to get rid of all that junk food. It has its place. And how it, we, how we do like... you do that, though? Because those foods are so convenient. People are really stressed out. They're short on time. How do you make that change? You've got to change the price. It's as simple as that. And, and we've invested in everything else in health, and we keep getting alarmed about the healthcare system getting overwhelmed and all that sort of stuff. Um, yet it is overwhelmed by chronic disease, uh, from, from rotten teeth to mental health to, to diabetes to heart disease, and these are all nutrition-related illnesses. So we need to start investing in it, and it's going to cost us some money to change our food supply and get healthy food cheap again. Yeah, and, it's going to cost uh, us some money if we don't do it, though, as well, isn't it? Just quickly, what are the implications if we don't make these changes? Well, we'll just continue to get uh, fatter, which we're not that happy about, but... I think people don't realise the other implications. I mean, mental, mental health, it's a massive topic for us and nutrition's a key ingredient in resolving that if, if it's out of kilter or preventing it happening in the first place. And we're just not talking about that. Let's get real. Uh, and I think the real rep is about real food. Uh, real is about investing real money. And real is facing the reality that actually we've got a food environment that's not going to support our health. OK, Grant, thanks for keeping it real tonight. Thanks for your time.